Hello boys and girls, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. In the last episode, I'm pretty sure that there was a bit of a, uh, a feud going on. Yeah, like near the end, after all that Kenji bullshit and all the running with Emi, uh, there was a little bit of a feud between Shizune and Lily. And it sucks that there is a feud and you kind of have to choose sides, especially since this is still our first fucking week at this institution. But whatever. Uh, we sided with Lily, uh, you know, telling Shizune, hey, 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 let's calm down here, all right? Which is probably something I would say <laughs> when it comes to something like an argument. I'd probably say something along the lines of, hey, 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 let's just calm down here. Because I have no backbone. But whatever. That's not important. <clears throat> what is important is getting back into this. I think we are actually coming to somewhat of an end to the common route or maybe we're not coming to an end but we're getting we're, we're getting through it pretty well this common route is apparently not as long as the grisaya common route uh which is the only game that i can really fall back on for a common route but because of the choices that we've been making we are narrowing in on a route so who knows when we'll jump into one because i i honestly don't know Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up with my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on, on blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I'm so glad that in all my years of education, I have never been in a classroom where there is a blackboard. It's a whiteboard, it's a projector, it's never a blackboard. Thank God. I start to copy down the equations just to pass the time, even though they are right there in the textbook. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do, so I stay for a while reviewing what we covered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with crowding the hallways. I notice Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizune is signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there is a maybe there is pent up anger in there. Misha is trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business. Shizune signs to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself, like she's dealing with tongue twisters. And then on top of that, she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished, and the girls sit down on their seats again. Ah, uh, I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to reconcile with Shizune a bit, Without getting roped into the student council thing again, though I suspect that door is now closed for me. Festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously, which is weird. And again, I'll never understand that sort of thing. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's <coughs> Sorry. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Shizune scoffs at me first, as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. She must have pr uh, practiced it vigorously. Well, of course, we're in the student council, you know? So we're pretty busy. 
It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with all our strength. We would shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festival were to fail. That's why there must be no flaws. N no, uh, I think that was encumbrances. Encumbrances? Brances? Whatever. No nothing that might make the festival short of perfect. Shizune's passionate speech and Misha's enacting are really oddly fitting of them. Oh? Hello! Oh shit, dude. It's Hanako. I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanako blushes hard at... What the hell's this music? Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Hmm, some fishy stuff going on here. Shizune stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where her, only her fingers can be seen wrapped nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanako? H has Lily been here? Sorry, haven't seen Setao. She uh, came in by the morning though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do... Do you know where she is? If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on the festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? And they are just... They're so brutal on her. It's ridiculous, man. I, I just can't accept that. You need to find her? She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you have missed each other. She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's proper to answer such a question. Y yeah I can come with you. If it's okay. Hanako nods fractionally, still on guard. Her shoulders stiff like wood. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression she seems to wear almost constantly. One that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. I kind of understand why she always seems to be so wary, or maybe more like why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon. Were you planning to eat with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than lunch hour, but I can understand why Hanako could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag, and we take our leave. Hanako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take long for us to be walking at a comfortable pace down the hallway. It almost feels like we're going for a stroll together, something that I can't say I've really done before with a girl. Hanako doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing, though. Even though we are walking at the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's still a little uncomfortable around me. Given how shy she is, there doesn't seem to be much helping it, at least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there is not much of a crowd there, but Lily is nowhere to be seen. Hanako's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? J just the library. I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Ah, so not exactly a thorough search then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class like Shizune said, right? R right. With the slightest of nods, Hanako agrees with my reasoning. God, she's being so awkward. It's like I need double-layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. 
Some small talk might help her become a bit more used to me. It isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both our minds. So you and Lily usually hang out together after class, right? Y yeah I'm not quite sure that what I expected from her answer, nor why I even asked that question. That much was rather obvious after all. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle either, so I suspect that Lily may well be her only friend. Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflexive nod. Compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech, Hanako hastens to make her answers as prompt and short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, though, even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, evidently appreciating the fact that Lily goes out of her way to help her. It's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say more. Both of us content that the, dis that the discussions reached an end. As we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading downstairs like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to, the, to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hanako has moved around behind me. Hey, are you alright? Just keep going. She is so damn shy. Like, a part of me feels like, oh, that's cute, but another part of me is like, huh, that could be a problem. <laughs> The students pass us without as much as a second glance, and Hanako takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. Her momentary, her momentary reprieve from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, or even shy girls, but Hanako seems to be pretty far beyond what I'd call normal in her fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily acting as a mediator, I doubt Hanako would have even be able to walk beside me like this. She seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of the walk to Lily's classroom continues in strange silence, while I rue her inability to socialize at all. After we make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting such a din at all. Well, I guess we found her. This wasn't hard. Did Hanako come here first, then come to me for backup, I wonder? Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can only be a good thing. For sure, for sure. Eventually, the two of us reach the door to Class 3-2. With Hanako less than subtly positioning herself behind me, I open the door. Oh, shit. This sounds busy. Inside is a hive of activity, seemingly every student in the class talking at once as they work hurriedly on their separate tasks. Going by the paint cans, decorations, and banners being made, it must be for the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. There. Finding her among the din is surprisingly easy, not the least because of her looks. With a couple of students gathered around her as she stands at the front of the class, she seems to be in charge of the preparations, or at least busy organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over the floor of lack of desk, or for lack of desk space, I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Hi, Lily. She per- What is this music? Oh, okay. I, I thought- It sounded like it was getting, like, all serious. She perks her head up as she breaks off, talking to a noticeably smaller girl, who must be her classmate, trying to listen as best she can. Sorry, who... Ah, uh, sorry, Hisao. I have Hanako, too. There she is. Uh, hi. She's pretty skittish. I hear my fucking dogs howling. Even with all this noise. She's pretty skittish. Considering the number of people around, it isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to assess the situation before turning to the other student once again. For the moment, just ask Moria for his advice. Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. Oh great, so Kenji's in this class. Fucking great. We'll probably have to talk to him again. A quick nod and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall's face for orientation. Wait, Kenji? That Kenji? I quickly turn about, leaning to the side to see past Hanako. Sure enough, in a corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. 
His eyes remain only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he had to be to make out my face when I met him. Sorry about that. Our class doesn't have many students with even partial eyesight, so they're in high demand. That's right. Class 3-2 was specially for students with poor vision. Preparing for the festival must be pretty arduous for them. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask, like if you're in a class that is just full of blind people, how the fuck do you get any work done? Need a hand? I could give you help if you need some. Maybe Hanako could too. A chance to set her mind on something would do her good, but I doubt she has the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods an affirmation afterwards, so I'm confident I made the right move. Lily gives a noticeable sigh of relief. Ah, oh, that's good. This might actually get finished, bef finished ugh, before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would you be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a big task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Kenji? Sure. She seems surprised that I know him, and I can't really blame her. I take it you've met? Our rooms in the dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's good to see you're f getting friends so fast. Friend. I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Hanako's silence during the proceedings reminds me of the reason I put her up to helping in the first place. We'll go help him then. He knows what he needs doing, right? That's right. Just ask if you have any problems. Chorusing in ascent, Hanako and I begin another trek across the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white calico, calico, whatever, in front of him. Hey, Kenji. No answer. He continues bragging, dragging, not bragging, his paint-soaked brush along the large half-painted kanji that sketch on the sheet of paper, or pencil, on the sheet in pencil, my bad. Kenji. Huh? What? Who was it? <sighs> This is the way he treats class members. It's no, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. It's me. Uh, oh, I, I guess we can't finish that at all. Right, right. I know that, man. What are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to really get focused on his work, hating to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Hanako's footsteps as she walks out from behind me reminds me that she's here. I was just going to help out with the banner. Hanako and I, that is. H hello Oh, uh, hey. I guess that's okay. As soon as Hanako enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about-face. His sudden fa hospitality is, is slightly unsettling. Oh, right, women. On second thoughts, this may not have been a great idea after all. Hanako and I grudgingly set ourselves down on the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji. No noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it, Class 3-2, Noodle Stall? You guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some stalls outside. Or something. Or something? His non-committal na nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. So how do you want to split this? We do borders while you do the text? Or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine. You do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over to grab a brush, I notice Hanako is already debating between colors to use. By the time I've put my... Er, whatever. By the time I've put brush to cloth... Sorry about that. She's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off everyone around her worked. With a dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's working to lean towards me and to whisper conspiratorially, though. Oh, great. Okay, man, why are you here? Hanako just wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. I get it. It looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep undercover? I should have guessed. Letting the truth slip by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him. In any case. Is that why you're here? Obviously. It sucks, but there's no better way to get intel than going in myself. Or in yourself. Blech. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school. A harsh world. Yes, very harsh. 
He misses my true meaning as he leans back. Satisfied, I am sympathetic to his cause. I'd better get down to work. <sighs> Fucking Kenji, man. What is this issue? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Finished. Looks like I am too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns. Mine being as close a copy as I can manage of hers. With a grunt, I lever myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of students talking among themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Need a hand? I offer a hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burned? I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing that I mean the banner. Yeah, for a second I was like, wait, we're not talking about the scars, are we? It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and shelves, it's much easier to get Lily or get to Lily as we cross the room. We finish the banner. I guess that's all that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Hisao, Hanako. If there's any way I can thank you, it's fine. Beats sitting in my room studying at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods before silently remembering one last person. <clears throat> oh, is Kenji still here? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Oh, so now he'll hear he'll hear someone if it's female on the other side of the classroom, but we, he won't hear us when we're right next to him. Yeah, just finished. He carefully slides his sign onto an empty section to, of shelf to dry before quickly walking past us and out the door. See ya, man. Bye. The remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time. Indeed. The class's plans this year were ambitious. Maybe too ambitious. The stalls look nice, though. She's right. It shows that a lot of work's gone into them. My, my. I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now, there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late. Should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hisao? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. Holy shit, this looks, this looks scary. The nighttime lighting really makes the gardens look quite different. Compared to the usual look of lush greenery, things are much more calm and scary. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms trying to eke the most out of their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Lily's cane regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah. Still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing with Shizune took me kind of off guard, though. I grit my teeth a little at the candid mention of the rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Uh, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. Shizune and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers Shizune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glanced to Hanako for her views on this, but her expression is unsurprisingly evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over in any case. The change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine... My old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals and such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do the work. What an unfair world. Hanako and Lily both chuckle in agreement, 
savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That'd go away towards explaining her well-bred speech and behavior in any case. As we come up to the dormitories, it eventually becomes, or it eventually comes time to leave for our respective rooms. See you, Lily, Hanako. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms, just next to the guys. As is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past them, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long before walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seem to or seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. And here we go into slumber. We need that. Yep, here it is. This little animation. How do I show you? Hell yeah. Having a good time so far, you know. All right. I guess we'll. Uh, I guess we'll end it here because we are almost out of time. We are on exercise. Oh boy, wonder what this fucking session or section is about. We don't have any choices to make in this one. Uh, we might in the next one, who knows. But I'm having a lot of fun with this, guys. We're almost at 10 episodes. I'm pretty sure this is the 9th, so the next one's the 10th. But I, I'm enjoying our friendships with uh, with Lily and Hanako. They seem like really great characters. And as a trio, I feel like some good times could happen. So I don't know how the route system works in this, but honestly, if it's any of the two of them, I mean, I will be totally fine with that. Whichever route or whatever we go on to, if it's Lily or Hanako, I'm sure that'll be fun. Uh, Rin, I'm very unsure of. Shizune, I don't even think that's possible anymore. And uh, Emmy, we don't know much about her yet. We've barely seen her. And we've barely seen Rin as well. So I don't know what's going to happen. We'll just have to make more choices and uh, set this story up for what it will be. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Katawa Shoujo. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy.